Hello everyone, in today's quick video I'm going to show you how you can use a single heating strip that looks like this to heat up and remove any fog or condensation from both your imaging scope, like a telephoto lens in my case when you're doing astrophotography, and also the guide scope. A single heating strip for both of these scopes. So yeah, let's get right into that. Let's go. Alright, so in order to use a single heater, like I have just shown you, for both an imaging scope and a guide scope, you're going to need to have them close together and sort of wrap the strip around the both of them. So let me extend this. This is uh, this is the lens that I use for Astro. This is the Canon 70 to 300 L. And if I extend this, uh, as you can see, if I take the guide scope, if I tuck them close together, I should be able to get the heating strip to have it wrapped around both this scope and also this guy. So the question is, how do we attach this uh, scope, the guide scope, so close to the lens itself so that we can use a single heater? And in order to do that, I'm using this a contraption that looks like this. And this actually consists of three different items. The links to all of them will be down below in the description if you want to pick them up. They are very cheap. I have uh, another piece right here. This is the uh, this is the first item. This is a super clamp from Small Rig. Uh, and then you have this piece which is a double ball head. This is how it is called from Small Rig as well. And as you can see if I undo this screw there are two ball heads in this one. One right here and the other one right here. And there are quarter 20 screws on both sides. And then on the super clamp you have holes. This is a quarter 20 and this is a 3 8 of an inch uh, screw hole. So you can use this one to screw it in and then the other end to screw into the guide scope. Uh, I'm using the guide scope mini from ZWO and it normally comes with this kind of a vixen style, uh, I think, foot right here that you can attach to your scope. But you can remove this foot and you are left with a quarter 20 screw hole that you can screw into this double ball head. And on this unit that I am using to, to do this attachment, I also have one more joint. This is a ball head from a Joby Gorilla Pod, and it also has a quarter 20 screw here and a quarter 20 screw hole on this side, so it provides me more flexibility with giving me a third joint. So I have one joint here, second, and the third on double ball head. So let's put this onto the guide scope. So I'm just gonna screw it in like this. And then, if this is nice and tight, we can actually position it onto our lens. So let's take the lens back. And as you can see, I'm using this uh, tripod uh, lens collar. Uh, for this lens, this is actually something that you would have to buy separately. But for a lot of telephoto lenses in the zoom range to like 300 or maybe even 600, like a 150 to 600, they come with lens collars. So I would definitely I recommend using one because that way you can distribute the weight of the camera on, on whatever you're putting it on, whether it's a tripod or a tracking mount, way better. So you can use this element to actually hook our super clamp onto that. So let me show you how I would do that. I would just take the super clamp and just position it on this part of the collar. So just like that and then tighten it. I can show you from the bottom how it looks. This just wraps around this part of the lens collar. And then I can tighten that nice and tight. And then if I put it like this, I can undo this screw on double ball head in order to have it positioned correctly. As you can see, it's pretty much already in position. But let me show you how the positioning would look like. So I would just position it where I want it, which is very close to this scope, and make sure that the front element of the guide scope, which is somewhere here, and the front element of the lens are sort of on the same level. So when we put the heating strip, both of these front elements are being heated up. So something like this looks all right. Uh, it actually touches the lens hood right here, which is which is great because it provides another point of stability of the guide scope. Just tighten it up and then we can take the heating strip and we can just easily wrap it around. I actually have a full review of this heating strip. This is uh, something I bought off Amazon. The brand name is Kuwu, some kind of a Chinese brand, I suppose. I will put the link to the review of this heating strip so you can check it out uh, somewhere here, I think. 
right and as you can see this heating strip is long enough to actually wrap around both the guide scope and the lens in this situation and if you look from the front as you can see both of these front elements are being sort of affected by the heating capabilities of this heating strip which is pretty cool so as you can see this is a pretty cool way to use only one heating strip to heat both of these scopes and then of course you have only one cable to, to power via a power bank. You don't need to get two of these, you don't need to pay as much to get both of these and at first and you might be worried about that too, I was worried that this might not be enough to heat those elements because the front element of the lens or the guide scope is not completely enclosed uh, and wrapped uh, on the heating strip but I have been using this on multiple nights uh, and when, when temperatures drop below the dew point for sure because all of my camera rig was completely soaked in condensation and the front elements of both the lens and the guide scope was completely and absolutely perfect fog free and condensation free so I can guarantee that this trick works and you might be actually wondering hmm how come I'm using a guide scope if I'm only shooting with a camera lens and a Skywatcher Star Adventure as you can see up here on the shelf and the guide scope is actually a complete game changer I would highly recommend you to get a guide scope because I will be actually making a video about this topic soon which is how to use a guide scope in conjunction with a Skywatcher Star Adventure to be able to both dither and also drizzle to create a fantastic imp images of a deep sky. Drizzling will double your resolution and dithering will enable you to do drizzling and also will make your images so much cleaner because dithering is basically just moving around the camera a little bit between sub exposures so if you average all of this out using stacking then this this noise that is like a fixed pattern noise on the, on the camera sensor will be pretty much completely removed so i will be making a video about it soon if you want to check that out definitely subscribe to my channel because i will be posting it i think very soon and also give this video a like if you liked it i would definitely appreciate it as always check out the videos that i have already on my channel and hopefully see you in one of my next videos clear skies and bye bye